to this week's Jodie Bunting podcast. My name is Jodie Bunting and today we have our special guest, my lovely friend from Park Run. It's Alison Woodcock. Hello. Hi, Alison. So you're not only just my Park Run friend, you're actually, I met you many years ago um, through Weight Watchers. So we were both working as coaches for Weight Watchers. Um, but now we often see each other on a weekly basis at the moment in a freezing cold park early on a Saturday morning. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what is your kind of your weight loss journey? How did you get into health and fitness? Okay, so um, I was that kid that hid in the tra- changing rooms during sport and PE when I was at school. Um, I was never overweight then. I was never overweight. I was particularly slim, I guess, until I hit 20s or maybe 30s. Um, I got a sister who was super slim, super fit, did lots of running, and I was that fat kid, really. Um, I embarked on my Weight Watchers my first Weight Watchers journey after I had my first child, he's 30 next year. And like most of us, we dip in and out of Weight Watchers most of our adult lives. Um, My most recent Weight Watchers journey was when my son was about to graduate in 2014. Um, I went on holiday in 2013 with my partner in February. All my summer clothes had shrunk while I were in the suitcase over the the winter period. How does that happen, eh? Got on the beach in Tenerife in February, nothing fit me, grim. Uh, on the plane home on the Sunday night at midnight, I said to my partner, I'm going to Weight Watchers tomorrow. He was like, what? You're fine. So I joined Weight Watchers. Um, did I run then? No, not really. I'd done an odd bit here and there. As I said, I've got a sister who was a keen runner. I never felt like I was good enough. She ran 10K, she ran half marathons. She wouldn't get out of bed for 5K. That's what she used to say to me. Um, So part and parcel of my most recent weight loss journey was getting my fitness back um, or finding that fitness, really. And the two do go hand in hand. Yeah. You've not got to run a marathon to be fit. But that activity, that steps, that moving every day, along with the healthy eating, is what works for me. I got to goal in um, May 2014, as Ben graduated in July 2014, and wore a size 10 dress. Uh, Felt fabulous. Um, Am I still on plan? Not really. Am I still at goal? Yeah, I'm five pound either side. But exercise has become a massive part of my life. And I honestly believe that if you exercise enough, you can forgive almost anything. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's all about maths and metabolism and stuff like that. And exercise just tips that balance, doesn't it? For sure. I do an active job. I work in a school. I work, I run 12, walk 12,000 steps every day. I run five days out of seven. I've got a puppy. So I'm never still. And I think I eat cake and I drink wine because I can. Yeah. And this is and what life is all about, isn't it? You've got yeah. to enjoy the journey. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you about yesterday. So I uh, joined some friends yesterday and we did the Kedleston Hall Jingle Jog. So 5K, uh, non-timed, around Kedleston Hall. It was freezing. We did the 5K very slowly. We finished the 5K. We were given a mince pie. Fabulous. Sat in the cafe. I've got a friend who's a cook. She'd made gingerbread Christmas trees. Had one of them. I've got a friend who also is a cook. She'd bought chocolate brownies. Had one of them. The lady in the cafe was a friend of one of my friends. She bought us a box of chocolate shortbreads. Had one of them. My other friend had a water bottle full of Baileys. (laughs) As if you could earn that many calories in 5K. (laughs) Well, in my head, I can. (laughs) And a lot of these water bottles are like a litre. So that's like a full (laughs) bottle of Baileys. There were six of us. We had a little drop (laughs) each. But do you know what, mate? That is why I run. I run so that I can have guilt-free treats. Yeah, that's what I'm careful. about. I'm careful. I eat chicken. I eat fish. I eat veg. I don't eat fried food. Yeah. I don't eat a lot of sweet stuff. But I drink wine. I eat crisps. And yeah, after a run, I have a piece of cake. Yeah. And it, this is what I say to my guys. You know, it's if you want to eat or or drink 
things that you think are unhealthy do a bit of exercise beforehand and it's complete you know it takes away the guilt it takes away any bad feeling doesn't it because you do deserve it so the trouble is you're always hungry yeah when you exercise the, you're always hungry that's the bad thing about fitness you, your metabolism gets to a rate where you do need to feed yourself all the time baby bell is my best friend yes i'm a big baby fan bell. of those incredible easy to carry with you on a run as well certainly for sure yeah for sure so what was your total weight loss uh 21 pounds okay so not an awful amount of weight i know but it was a lot of weight to me um it was that difference from being not comfortable with myself to being comfortable with myself and it doesn't matter does it as a, as a weight which is leader i knew that it could be five pounds yeah it could be ten pounds it didn't matter I moved the number on the scale to a number that I was happy with. I moved the number on the dress size to a number that I was happy with. And that, that's enough for me. And especially active people and fitness people, you know, five pounds, you can really tell, for instance, on a run, that you've sure. got an extra five carrying pounds. carrying that extra five pounds, for sure. So tell us, how did you first get into part run? Um, well, I first got into running because of my sister, as I said, my sister was a good runner, she was a marathon runner, and she kind of sort of set me this challenge and said, well, you'll never be able to run. Um, and I had a friend who I worked with who said, oh, you, you want to try part run? And I said, what, what even is it? And he said, oh, turn up. And back in the day then, it was at Darley. Yeah. Darley Park. So Mark Eaton Park Run was Darley. So I turned up at Darley Park. Um, let me tell you when it was. It was the 12th of September, 2015. Wow, 10 years um, ago. It was my first, no, it was 2022, seven years ago. Oh. <laughs> seven years ago. I mean, uh, the math up, is not very good, is it? Turned up at my part run. Um, the, the, the most interesting I found about it, it started um, by, the, um, by the play park in Darley Park, and you kind of stood on the hill there, and as you looked around, people were coming from every direction yeah and all joined together and it was a tough course darling it was a tough course I didn't do it for long I probably only did it six or eight times and then I dipped in and out of park run over the next couple of years um I quite enjoyed it and what I like about it is you're only competing against yourself really yeah um I think you never know who's going to turn up so as I got more competitive, I noticed that if she didn't turn up, I'd win my age group. But if that random woman from Sheffield turned up, then I didn't. Yeah. And that's what, what I really love about it. So Darley moved to Mark Eaton. Um, I ran the, the first Mark Eaton part run, which I think was in 2017 or 2018. My son was home, he was at university and he was home. And he said, well, let's go and do this part run thing. And I said, oh, I've done a couple. And he came with me. And uh, he was first in age group in 19 minutes and 38 seconds. But I was first in age group too, at 27 minutes and 28 seconds. And that's the beauty of it. He won, I won. Yeah. And there was eight minutes between us. Um, so it became a bit of a, a competitive thing for me. Um, and then in 2018, I was lucky enough to get a place in the London Marathon, a ballot place in the London Marathon. Great. Um, and a friend said to me, oh, you want to join a running club? You know them ladies that you talk to at Park Run every Saturday? I said, yeah, they run with Symphony Running Club. So he kind of formally introduced me to these ladies who I'd met and chatted to. And indeed, they run with Symphony Running Club, as I do now. And they got me round my London Marathon. But the Park Run, the weekly Park Run, became a big part of that training because I would run two part run and then run part run. And then one of the girls would run home with me and we'd run 20 miles before we knew it. Fantastic. And we used to call that a part run sandwich. That's a part yeah. run sandwich where you run to it. And, and it just, it's become very social for me now. Um, I've got a really good group of girl and, and boy friends and we meet and we run and we go for coffee and we go for cake and we go different part runs and it's, it's great. I really look forward to my Saturday mornings. I've just been to Sweden. My son lives in Sweden. Um, and he said, what do you want to do on Saturday morning? Mum, I went, ah. <laughs> we need to ask. <laughs> and he was like, seriously. Um, so he turned up at the park run and he'd been, he, he's not a runner, but he'd been doing some training. He's run a marathon. And he said, I'd love to run 
sub 21 mum I'd love to run sub 21 and I said oh, well I'd run, to run sub 30 um I think I was third in age group but he ran a 19 28 part run and it just shows you that when you turn up into that environment yeah. you can really push yourself you can really push yourself but also I've tail walked and that doesn't matter either because you're helping I've seen you tail walk and you're helping those people yeah get across the finish line and anybody anybody has got 5k in them i believe yeah and it like you said it is just that community i don't know what it is but there's such a great feeling amongst the runners and the volunteers and stuff like that and this is why it has spread literally throughout the world isn't it because it's got yeah. this great recipe now yeah for, for sure it, 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 it just it's just a real feel good on a saturday morning yeah. And, you know, you're home for 10 o'clock, 10.30, and you feel really good because you've done something. Tell us your PB. For those of you that, people who don't know what a PB is, in the running world, it's a personal best. 5K PB, what is it? My PB is 25.44. Wow. But I run a 25... 26 56 two weeks ago because i've had some of them fancy new trainers you know them Ooh. nike doing things i ran a 26 56 but yeah 25 44 on the 14th of may 2016 at long eaton oh oh yeah i've done the long eaton course it's really nice because it's so flat isn't it flat isn't it so have you got the part run app jody the the 5k mm -hmm. app yeah yes the one that tells you all the special stats and stuff yeah, so it tells you everything. So we chase the alphabet here. Our friends, my friends and I, we chase the alphabet here. I tend to part run starting with every letter of the alphabet, except for an X. So I've done Alveston Beast and Conkers, Dishley, Hugger, Isabel, Long Eaton, Mark Eaton, Rugby, Shipley, Victoria, Woolerton. 48%. My very good friend Fiona has three to do. Oh, really? One of them is York. One of them is in... Poland we're gonna have some weekends away next year I think <laughs> and again that's again this is why part run is loved by so many people because there is these little challenges and people literally travel the world just to part run which is not a bad thing at all is it what a way to see the world hey running yeah. 5k eating cake drinking coffee fabulous so why do you think part run is particularly good for the unfit or like overweight people for instance how we've used to work with people because you can walk because you can walk and then run because it's non-judgmental and even if you're last you'll never last because there's a tail walker yeah and part run introduced in for october and you probably know about this the part walk and for the first time ever they called it a part walk yeah that was i was so pleased they did that and so walk and uh, and as i said to you before we came on air i've got a niece she's she's 22 now um she's very very dear to me but she's special needs she has prada willie syndrome which is what uh, Katie Price's son has. Yeah. And uh, she's the most determined young woman I've ever met. And I said to her in June 2019, come with me and do a part run. And she said, OK, I'll tell us in how far is it? I said, it's, it's five kilometres. And we set off. And her, her actions are that that she's running. But her speed is, is pretty slow. And uh, she was she was last. She was last with the tail walker and she finished in 54, 55 minutes. And she kept coming back and she came with me to my hundredth and she was with me on my hundred and fiftieth. And she she doesn't live locally, she lives in, in Coventry. And she called me up about six weeks ago and she said, I'm telling you, I've just done my 50th part run wow. and I ran it in 34 minutes. Amazing. And that, that's incredible. That is yeah. just incredible. And to see that progression, and yeah, it's took three years, but to see that progression, and when she comes here, she goes to part run locally with her dad, and her dad goes and they run and they get in the car and they go home. And she comes with me and my friends are all here and they're all cheering her on at the end. And there's a coffee or a McDonald's and she much prefers to come with me. And she just feels like she's really achieved something. And I think that's so important. I've run three marathons. It's not for everybody. If you can achieve that 5K, and that's the best you're ever going to do, fair yeah. play. Fair play to you. And actually, the first time we did it, my partner came, and he doesn't run. And uh, he only did one lap. <laughs> he did one lap, and he finished before me. And I went, 
when we finished before we went oh, I only did one lap <laughs> but he turned up and he ran one lap and he was non not judged and that's the best thing about Paul Run. no one judges you someone will always be cheering your name yeah. and actually when I ran it one time with my niece there was a, a fella running and he was cutting corners and she stopped and she was like I'm telling he's cheating I was like, it doesn't, matter. It doesn't matter well I've got special needs and I'm not cheating I was like, and it took me all my time. <laughs> and my message to her was, he's only cheating himself. Yeah. And that that's so true. That's yeah. so true. Jodie, I had a shocking run on Saturday. I ran a 35-minute part run. I've just told you I can run a 25-minute part run. But my mates were there cheering me on at the end. I had my festive coffee at McDonald's. I moved on. It's another day. We all have good runs and we all have bad runs. And nobody judges you at part run. Was it because it was so cold or we just... I, don't, I just don't know. I've, I've had an injury. Um, yeah. I haven't been 100% well. I thought I was okay. I got halfway round and thought, what am I doing? And the easy thing to do would have been to walk off. We don't yeah. have to do that at Park Run because there's always someone behind you, isn't there? Usually you. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I, remember, you I remember a couple of months ago when you were injured and you couldn't do it, but you still came along to support, didn't you, Alison? Yeah, so in my club, in my running club, we have part run championship and you get points for where you finish. You get points if you go elsewhere, you get points, but you get points for volunteering because volunteering is key. Yeah. If you don't volunteer, you can't have a part run. So we're encouraged to volunteer at least three times a year. And I think we all do that. And if we all do that, then we've always got, got a run to go to. And what yeah. you do, you part walk, that's a volunteering event, isn't it? Yeah. And you get a T-shirt for that, you get an award for that, and that that's really great. Now, the reason I wanted to do this uh, part run uh, podcast with you, particularly <laughs> now, is because something special happens on Christmas Day and New Year's Day, doesn't it? Tell everybody what that is. You can run a park run. Woo! On Christmas so, Day. Christmas Day park run I've never run. My intention is to run it this year. Oh, is it? Great. Um, yeah, I've never ran it because I always either have family here or I go to family. But my son's coming home from Sweden and he said, what do you want to do on Christmas morning? Mom, I went, I want to do a run. He was like, are you serious? And I said, will you do it with me? So he said, yeah, we'll do it. Jodie, it's nine o'clock. We're home to ten. We're yeah, home to ten. Exactly. Most of still in bed. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, they used to do what they called double top on New Year's Day. So I think it was 20, January the 1st, 2019. I drove to Long Eaton. I ran Long Eaton Park Run. I drove to Mark Eaton. <laughs> I ran Mark Eaton Park Run. I ran Mark Eaton faster than Long Eaton. How the hell did that happen? And so I'd done two park runs in a day. <laughs> my, my partner thinks I'm insane. Um, but they're not doing that this year. I think because it's a Sunday, yeah. giving the volunteers the day off on New Year's Day. But Beeston is on on Christmas Day. Alveston is on on Christmas Day. Yeah. And it is my intention to turn up and run a park run on Christmas Day. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. You see, I can't get any of my slimmers to do it on Christmas Day. They're all they're all up for New Year's Day. I think that seems to be the motivation. But Christmas Day, I think I'm thinking I might just volunteer, Alison, because uh, yeah, I don't think there'll be loads. There'll maybe be a hundred people at Alveston, yeah, which is a lot less than normal. But you know, for those people who've got nobody, who yeah. otherwise are at home alone. Why not do it? Why yeah. not take an hour out of your day, get that feel good, you know, get those happy hormones rushing around your body, have a mince pie, because I'm sure there'll be mince pies, <laughs> and feel like you've achieved something. And, and I think that's great. I, I really think that's great. Uh, I've got a puppy, but he's not a puppy, he's five stone now. Um, and my son's girlfriend's a tiny little girl, and she said, can I come to part run? And I said, yes, can you bring Reggie? And my son said, can she ride him? <laughs> so maybe she will. Maybe she'll win. <laughs> But that's the other thing about part run. You can walk, you can yeah. run, you can jog, you can push a buggy, you can take a dog. You can do what on earth you want to do to get you round. So why wouldn't you? My stepdad's even been round in his mobility scooter. In his mobility scooter. Well, you wait on the on the 8th of January, there'll be 500 people at Mark Eaton yeah. Park Run. They'll all come out, their New Year's resolution, and they'll all be out, and it'll be great. And loads of them will keep coming. And that's it's just great. What's your favourite part run? Um, Woolerton was pretty nice. Yeah, a couple of 
though. That was really nice. Uh, the one I did in Stockholm was stunning. Yeah. Um, and I did Rushcliffe a couple of weeks ago. So I think they're my top three. If you're asking me to pick my favourite, I think it would be Wollerton. It was beautiful. Yeah, I want to do that. But I particularly love Mark Eaton because, uh, A, there's two circles. So if you do want to, if you're a beginner, you can just do one lap to begin with. But there seems to be just a great atmosphere at the start and the end. You know, I don't know what, I think it's just the layout of the park. There's just a really nice atmosphere, don't you think, at Mark Eaton? Yeah, and I think, I know a couple of the run directors at Mark Eaton. I know Angela, she was one of my members. Oh, so Angela, she? who's, yeah, so Angela was one of my members at Oakwood. Um, and I used to see her at Park Run, and she's a Park Run director now. And actually, on Saturday, she beat me. She well and truly beat me, and she was <laughs> buzzing with that. Um, and she's really nice. And a lot of the volunteers are there. You know, the guy that's in the woods with his little bike. Oh yeah. At the bottom of the bridge. He's there. I reckon he stays there all week. I don't think he goes home. He's Every there. And, you know, and some of the <laughs> some of the volunteers are just there week in, week out, and they get to know you. And you also get to know, um, I know the ladies that are in my age group that run around me. And often I hear them wanting to get past me or me wanting to get past them. And there's that. And I'll let anybody pass me at part run, as long as they're not my age group. If they're my age group, my foot goes out, my elbow goes out. But if you're male and you're not in my age group, go past me. It's fine. <laughs> I Look, love this whoever, competitiveness. Whoever said it's not the winning that matters, Nah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Alison, what are your top tips for anybody who wants to get started in part run or running in general, actually? Running in general, you need three things. As a lady, you need three things. A decent bra, a good pair of trainers, and some motivation. You don't need anything else. I've got everything, Jodie. I've got watches. I've got heart rate monitors. I've got hats. I've got gloves. I've got leg warmers. I've got arm warmers. You don't need any of that. Yeah. You need a bra, a pair of trainers, and some motivation. That's all you need. Turn up. The first step is the hardest. And once you've taken that first step, that's it. And you're in the part run community, and you're in the part run family then, and that's really special. I went to San Francisco, uh, November 2019, I went to San Francisco. My partner's got family there. We're walking under the uh, San Francisco Bridge on the Saturday morning. There's a load of people there. And my partner's cousin said to me, oh, something going on over there. You've probably not heard of it in England. I went, what is it? He went, oh, um, they call it Park Run. The Golden Gate Bridge. Had I known that, I would have taken my trainers. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Orlando in April. I said to my son, there's a Park Run. Will you take me? He said, Mum, it's four and a half drive, four and a half hours drive away for you to run for 30 minutes. No. But it doesn't matter. Anywhere in the world, yeah. you're part of that community. You turn up with your barcode. When I went to Sweden, I've got my barcode on my Garmin. Have you? You don't need that bit of paper. Got yeah, it put it on me, I watch. So I showed it in Stockholm. They were like, oh my life. We didn't know you could have that. And that starts really? a whole other conversation. Yeah. yeah. And there you go. Because my son's friend was there and uh, she stood at the side of me and she said, they'll do all the announcements in Swedish. I said, all right, okay. So he did the first announcements in Swedish and then he dropped into English and he said, any tourists? And my son's friend's going, so I went, yeah, yeah. And there's a fella at the side of me, he went, yeah, yeah. So he turned to the fella at the side of me, he said, where are you from? And this fella said, Wales. Ooh. So he turned to me, he said, where are you from? I said, England. Everybody went, ooh. And the guy at the back shouted, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I you lost were that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he starts those whole conversations. It yeah. doesn't matter where you are. There's somebody in Mark Eaton on Saturday from Japan, I think. What's that? It just starts those whole conversations. It's it's just brilliant. Yeah. So I would say just give it, just give it a try. Just give it a try, and the chances are you'll see somebody you know. Right now, Alison, we're going to finish off by I want you to answer this question because, as you know, it's nearly Christmas. All I want for Christmas is a marathon PB next year. <laughs> what are you currently on? Uh, four forty-one. Four forty-one for London. Four forty-nine for London Virtual, 501 for Manchester, and I'm running Stockholm next year, three years delayed. Wow. It will be my last. It will be my okay. last. And I'd like to run it in 4.30, but 
I'm an old lady now. No, you can do it, Alison. You know, it's we'll all see. about mind over matter. Yeah, but you know what, Jodie? You get the same medal. Oh, do you? You get the same medal if you're willing to run it in eight hours or yeah. if you run it in two hours. When I ran the London Marathon, a woman at work said to me on the Monday morning, Oh, you ran that marathon, didn't you, yesterday? I said, yeah, here's my medal. And she said, what time did you do it in? And I went, four hours. And she went, oh. I went, oh. She said, well, that Mar Mo Farah ran it in 207. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yes, but he got the same medal as me. Yeah, and you're, you're very right. <laughs> Great. It's not a win, it is the taking part. Yeah, it's the taking it is. Part, for sure, for sure. Right, Alison, thank you so much for joining us. I will see you at Part Run very soon. On Christmas Day? Yes, I'll see you on Christmas Day <laughs> at Part Run. At Alison, okay. all right. Okay, you take care. Great. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.